question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Ranking Member. You know, this is an unusual hearing at an unusual time. I have never seen a hearing so close to an election on any topic, let alone on something that is so obviously a violation of our obligation under the law and the rules of the Senate to stay out of electioneering. We never do this, and there is a very good reason that we don't call people before us to yell at them for not doing our bidding during an election. It is a misuse of taxpayer dollars. What's happening here is a scar on this committee and the United States Senate. What we are seeing today is an attempt to bully the CEOs of private companies into carrying out a hit job on a presidential candidate by making sure that they push out foreign and domestic misinformation meant to influence the election. To our witnesses today, you and other tech leaders need to stand up to this immoral behavior. The truth is that because some of my colleagues accuse you, your companies, and your employees of being biased or liberal, you have institutionally bent over backwards and overcompensated. You've hired Republican operatives, hosted private dinners with Republican leaders, and in contravention of your terms of service, given special dispensation to right-wing voices and even throttled progressive journalism. Simply put, the Republicans have been successful in this play. And so during one of the most consequential elections in American history, my colleagues are trying to run this play again, and it is an embarrassment. I have plenty of questions for the witnesses on Section 230, on antitrust, on privacy, on anti-Semitism, on their relationship with journalism. But we have to call this hearing what it is. It's a sham. And so for the first time in my eight years in the United States Senate, I'm not going to use my time to ask any questions because this is nonsense. And it's not going to work this time. This play my colleagues are running did not start today. And it's not just happening here in the Senate. It is a coordinated effort by Republicans across the government. Last May, President Trump ex issued an executive order designed to narrow the protections of Section 230 to discourage platforms from engaging in content moderation on their own sites. After it was issued, President Trump started tweeting that Section 230 should be repealed as if he understands Section 230. In the last six months, President Trump has tweeted repeal Section 230 five times, in addition to other tweets that, in which he's threatened the tech companies. A few weeks later, President Trump withdrew the nomination of FCC Commissioner Mike O'Reilly. Republican Commissioner O'Reilly questioned the FCC's authority to regulate under Section 230, and the statute is not unclear on this. President Trump then nominated Nathan Simington, who was the drafter of NTIA's petition to the FCC regarding Section 230. And Republican senators have enthusiastically participated. Since June of this year, six Republican-only bills have been introduced, all of which threaten platforms' uh, ability to moderate content on their site. And as the election draws closer, this Republican effort has become more and more aggressive. September 23rd, DOJ unveil unveiled its own Section 230 draft legislation that would narrow the protections under the current law and discourage platforms from moderating content on their own site. September 14th and October 1st, respectively, Senators Hawley and Kennedy tried to pass their Republican-only Section 230 bills via live unanimous consent. Now, what that means is they went down to the floor and without a legislative hearing, without any input from Democrats at all, they tried to pass something so foundational to the internet unanimously without any discussion and any debate. On the same day as Senator Kennedy's UC attempt, Senator Wicker forced the Commerce Committee, without any discussion or negotiation beforehand, to vote on subpoenaing the CEOs of Twitter, Facebook, and Google to testify. That's why we're here today. Two weeks later, on October 14th, Justice Clarence Thomas, on his own, issued a statement that appeared to support the narrowing of the court's interpretation on Section 230. The very next day, the FCC chairman, Ajit Pai, announced that the FCC would seek to clarify the meaning of Section 230. On that day, Senator Graham announced that the Judiciary Committee would vote to subpoena 
the tech companies over the content moderation. And the context of this, in addition to everything, is that Senator, Senator Cruz is on Maria Bartiromo talking about a blockbuster story from the New York Post. Uh, Senator Hawley is on Fox and on the Senate floor. And the Commerce Committee itself is tweeting a, out a campaign-style uh, video that sort of alarmingly says Hunter Biden's emails, tech censorship. On October 21st, Senator Hawley reattempted to pass his bill on Section 230 via UC, again without going through any committee markup or vote. And on Friday, Senator Graham announced that the CEOs of Facebook and Twitter would testify before the Senate Judiciary Committee on November 17th. This is bullying, and it is for electoral purposes. Do not let the United States Senate bully you into carrying the water for those who want to advance misinformation. And don't let the specter of removing Section 230 protections or uh, an amendment to antitrust law or any other kinds of threats cause you to be a party to the subversion of our democracy. I will be glad to participate in good faith bipartisan hearings on these issues when the election is over. But this is not that. Thank you.